carry on about nothing at all? Nothing at all. Don't take things so hard, Julie. You keep out of this. It's strictly a family matter, not for the help. Don't you feel awfully guilty about barking and snapping at everyone? Guilty? About what? You think I'm blind? You think I have no eyes or ears or common sense? I think you have too much of that. I rent my sheds for storage space, and you think that I... Pop, why do you lie? I'm leaving you. Julie, I'm, I never raised a hand to you in my life. And I never raised a hand to your ma while she was living. Because I ain't that kind of a man, Julie. But you got me near crazy. Pop? What? Will you tell me the truth? Yes. What's your connection with the ghost? Well, nothing necessarily. I, I just ran in my sheds, that's about all. But they're better and more accessible sheds than ours. We're off the main highway and hard to reach. And why do the ghost men always load and unload at night? Why is it they're always padlocked? Julie. I've answered that question a hundred times today. The sheds are cooler at night. And they're they're locked against thieves. But you're not a thief, are you, Pop? No. Then why are they locked against you? Why can't you get in your own shed? Well, who says I can? Can you? Well, sure I can. Then why can't I get in? Them's no place for a girl. And I don't see that it's any of your business or your concerns what's in them sheds. Isn't it? Among other things, there are tires in those sheds. Well, what of it? What's wrong with tires? And don't you go shooting your mouth off to anybody either. Oh, if it's so above board to have hundreds of tires. Louis, I see we've come to a showdown. Yes, Pop. I sent you through school and you never had to work a day in your life. And I sent you money regular, just like a clock. Too regularly. What do you mean by that? I've been here four weeks. I haven't seen a half a dozen customers come in and out of the busy bee. Only a strange assortment of characters that pad in and out and never eat a drink. I thought I'd love the buttes. You mean you thought you'd run away to the buttes? I didn't run away. No? A girl studies to be a school teacher all her life. And a father sends her money all through state college. And the last term she quits. No, that don't make sense. And I didn't ask you to come down here. Remember that, Julie? I'm beginning to understand why. Well, you don't know nothing. Maybe. But I'll find out tonight. Oh, yeah? Just, just how? I'm going to the dunes and I'm going to see the ghost. Well, go ahead. Nobody's stopping you. Believe me, nobody's stopping me. Well, now what am I going to do? Don't ask me. I'm one of the help. I don't belong to the family. Oh, don't be contrary. Melba, as a woman, I'm asking you, what shall I do? Well, if I was you, I'd start shivering. Suppose she finds out. <laughs> Melba, you got to do something. Well, it ain't my funeral. What? No. Okay, I'll do what I can. But I'm doing it for Julie. Well, so am I. We'll see. I tell you, you tell her that... I'll do it my own way, a woman's way. That's an awful pretty dress. New century. Well, why do you say that? But I'll tell you something. What? He feels awfully bad. Why? Well, for losing his temper all the time. He only loses his temper when I ask him questions. Otherwise, he's the sweetest man on earth. He is sweet, isn't he? Mel... 
Tell me something. Sure. You've been here a long time. What has Pop to do with the ghost? Now, you know, you must know something. Well, now, isn't that funny? That's just what I came up to get into about the ghost. Isn't that a crazy name for a man to go by? What about him? Well, first of all, don't go tonight, honey. As one girl to another. Look, if you came out I to try... I didn't, Julie. The ghost is no good. I know. Oh, you do? No, that isn't it. You've got brains and education. You've got class. Kathy. That isn't it, Sugar. I'm scared. I don't want the ghost to get his hands on you. Get his hands on me? Julie, he's woman crazy. Be a child. This is no social call. Hello, Pop. She is? Fine, fine. You know, I've been wanting to meet her. What are you talking about? I'm not going to spill anything to her. No. Now, listen, behave yourself, will you? With me, a bargain's a bargain, do you understand? Look, we came here to talk to you. Why don't you fellas relax and go on home? I'll see you tomorrow night. Just a minute, Ghost. Make it snappy. Now, here it is. Federal men are too close for safety. You understand that? And three raids in Phoenix last week. I'm entertaining tonight, boys. How do I look? I'm pretty sharp, huh? Look, this is business. If you don't care to handle this, Big Charlie does. Why don't you relax? I told you, go on home and I'll see you tomorrow night. And give my regards to Big Charlie. Yeah? Well, take it from me. He sends his to you, too. Come on, Steve. Alibaba. Yes, sir. Set me up, too, in my apartment. And the very best. You understand? Yes, sir. I want to relax. Yes, sir. It's all a fake a rule. What do the customers say? They say you're terrific. The mental mystic. What do you think? I think you're sensational. Can you read my mind? I already have. <laughs> Relax. Bronson's daughter. Enter in. Step in, lady. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Mr. Martin. Alexander Caesar Martin. Yes, I know. May I speak with you a few minutes? You're a beautiful girl. It's about my father and you. Prettier than a picture. Look, Mr. Martin, I know what's going on. Prettier than your own picture. It's amazing. What picture? Where'd you get this? My hobby. Collecting people I don't know. Why do you do this? He doesn't look like a professor, does he? Doesn't he? Relax, honey. I have a flair for organization, that's all. Let me show you. Come here. So I see. Mm -hmm. I still say he doesn't look like a professor. Hi, you army. Hello. You Mr. Bronson? That's right. What can I do for you? I'm Bob Lord. Bob Lord? <whistles> Hi, ho, Silver. Well, Julie's Bob? Well, I'm mighty glad to get acquainted with you, son. Come in and sit down. Right. What, what are you doing in these parts? 
stationed up at Camp Adams, Mr. Bronson. I'm sorry to seem to be in such a rush, but it took me longer to find this place than I figured. And I have to go right back to camp. Tell me about Julie, though. How is she? Well, you should know. Son, Julie's a funny girl. She talks a lot about you, but what she says ain't all flattery. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as she never starts talking. You hear from her often? Hear from her. You don't know she's with me now? You mean she left school? You mean you don't know that neither? Why, no, sir. I, I was nearby, so naturally I wanted to meet you. Oh, you know, Julie's always been so proud of you. Yeah, but has she, though? Oh, uh, you and Julie kind of busted up. How come? Well, it was... Well, never mind that. But man to man, boy, said she's hankering for you. Is she really? Hell, wait till she sets eyes on you. <laughs> boy, I, I wouldn't miss that for a barrel. <laughs> well, well, let me surprise her. Well, she ain't in now. Well, oh. why, can't, can't you wait? No, I'm afraid not. Well, but you'll sure come back, won't you? Don't worry, I'll be back. Boy, you don't know how glad I am to see you. Well, that's great. Oh, uh, by the way, don't tell Julie I was in, huh? <laughs> I got you. You bet. Very interesting. Is that all there is to the story? Yep. That's all. You know, you're human after all. Well, I figured out the old man with a pretty girl who'd go to school, I... Well, me. I was stuck with the busy bee. Why not set him up in business? Why not? What do you get out of it? Don't worry about me. I can't live very long. Perhaps a year or two. And I'll explode. In here or there. No. I'll explain. It's all very simple. When I was a kid, I was very hungry. Never got very much to eat. You know what that does to a little punk? Oh. A rich country? A hungry kid? Well, you figure it out. Listen, my dear. There's good in me. I've got genius, I tell you. Straighten me out before I kick off. Please give me a break. You're very clever. I'm not proud. I'm going to tell you something that I wouldn't dare tell anyone else. I'm the dumbest sap alive. If I had a wife... See all this? Over here, I'll show you some more. Why do I listen to you? Because you're just as helpless as I am. Look at this. I own all this territory. Do you know what? No, what? They call me the ghost, huh? They left me for dead, not once but twice. Tried to rub me out. Rub me out. Half crazy and, and, and half dead, I hit the west. Stone broke, not a cent. And I'm the builder. And all of this could have belonged to your old man. My father? I don't understand. I tell you what, pretty girl. I'll make a deal with you. It's all yours. Mine? Mm hmm. Tonight, you mustn't ask why. It didn't make sense. desert exile. I have perhaps a year or two to live. But I don't give up. I've built an empire. Yes, that's your passion. I know what you mean. I built it on sand, huh? And when I go, it goes. Life should go on, shouldn't it, pretty girl? 
There's poetry in you. Wait. I should have met you a long, long time ago. Why did you do that? Why did I? Oh, please don't fight. All my life I've wanted something clean. And whatever I want... No. Whatever I want, I get you, hear me? If I have to smash it, I get it. Oh! The fall of lightning changes. I don't understand you. A moment ago, I saw a flash. You're still here? Light it. I almost wish in some crazy mad way I could. You can. And you will. No! Good night. You'll be back, my dear. Like you've seen a ghost. I did. Julie, what's the matter? He's mad. I don't like the way you said that, honey. I don't like it myself. Julie, you're smart, but on a couple of things I'm smarter. I told you I know the ghost from way back. I warned you. Don't be a child. You ain't kidding me. What do you mean? It ain't because of your pop that you're so upset. No? No. I know the ghost. He's wacky and caving in. Got a bullet in his brain, a slug in his chest, and he makes big of it. He eats your heart out for sympathy and asks for a break, and you give it to him. I won't give him any sympathy. Suppose I did. Are you crazy? With a first-rate guy like Bob Lord wanting you? Bob's a million miles away. I wonder if I'll ever see him again. Well, Julie, he was here. He was what? Well, it was supposed to be a surprise. I didn't mean to tell you. Honest, I didn't, but he's coming back tomorrow. No! He's coming. Gee, he's handsome. Quite place to me. Well, now you think. Think hard. I'm thinking, stranger. Oh, darling. <laughs> oh, darling. You must tell me about yourself. Well, can I here? I love it. Julie, I may have seemed hasty when I enlisted, but the war did come, and it's a war worth fighting. Ah, oh, we're out on a pass. Um, can I see you tonight about 8 o'clock? I don't know, Bob. Well, I know your date book was always pretty full in college. Yes, my chemistry professor from Monday till Saturday. And Sunday. Yes, for variety. I'll see you tonight. Julie. Julie, there's a phone call for you. 
for me? I think it's him. Tell him I'm not him. Tell him anything. I don't want to speak to him ever. The ghost will get her for sure. The ghost will get her? That ghost. The ghost in person. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, don't you worry now. I'll take care of everything. Thanks a million. You understand now, don't you? Oh, sure. You bet. Good evening, Lieutenant. Good evening, Miss Bronson. Can you salute me, Lieutenant? You've always been my commanding officer. Have I? Well, let's go. We're going places. Oh, where? It's all set. Come on. <sighs> where are we headed, Bob? Shh. It's a secret. Oh, God, the dunes. No. All through school, we sat and looked at that moon. But tonight, this is going to be a big evening. Oh, darling, I'd rather look at the moon. And listen to the coyotes. <laughs> Why? Bob, you can't afford the dunes. They're outrageously expensive. Ah, who cares about money? Who knows about tomorrow? Julie, tonight I can afford anything. But, darling, I'm not dressed. I don't want to go in. <laughs> Nonsense. Tonight's the night. on making speeches, Ghost. You know the situation. Go right ahead. The big jury let you horn in on this territory thinking there's room enough for both of you. There was. That's right. But people are not spending like they used to. What are you talking about? There's more money now than ever. Not for us. Since this war, it's a squeeze play. So we can buy it. We'll do the talking, Ghost. Just remember you're not back east anymore. And? Things are going to be a little bit different. Go ahead. And you're going to sell out the big Charlie. Supposing I don't want to sell. You'll sell. Get out of here. Get out! She's yeah, don't get sore. Big Charlie ain't getting around. Oh, why don't you relax? Put your big hips in the chair and shut up. think we'd be in this war. You know that? Darling, you know what? No, what? Good evening. How are you, Miss Bronson? Very well, thank you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alexander Caesar Martin, a very close friend of Miss Bronson's. I'm Bob Lord, very old friend of Miss Bronson's. 
Will you join us? Thanks. I hear a lot about you, Lieutenant. Well, I hope it's not all bad. Mr. Marby. Bob and I haven't seen each other for a long time. He has to go back to camp soon. I hope you won't think I'm being rude. I think you're being very rude. Now, just a minute. Please, Bob. All right, children. For your sake. Hey, boss. Strike one, Big Charlie. Strike two, the Army. Who's pitching? I'm pitching. And I never lose. And don't you forget it. Was it? First of all, there was Frank. A student. So young. Then there was, uh, Eddie. The football player. Not bright. Very strong. Then there was, uh, Let me see. Number three was Sandy Lake. He used to play trombone at the Teddy Ted Cafe. He used to play for me in the moonlight. Sweet Mr. Love. You really are sweet not to ask any questions, Bob. You big baby! What do you want? Open up. This is a matter of business I want to talk to you about. Can't it wait? Open up, I said. Why don't you keep this place clean, huh? What are you talking about? It's spick and span. I don't like the dog. Well, what do you want? You remember, I don't want Julie woke up. Find your men Bob. The chief does the talking. How does this, Bob? From now on, I give orders around here, do you understand? Well, you always have. I wanted action. And by action, I don't mean frying hamburgers, you get me? I remember, Ghost, I've always done just as you said. But now enough's enough. Hello, pretty girl. What's happening? Well, now, I don't want to be rude. I didn't figure you could hear me, believe me. To get this whole thing straight. I mean to. Right. Number one. From now on, I'm boss around here. You are. And why? Ghost, I warn Shut you. Shut up. Uh, I'm going to go through with my end of the bargain on one condition. The pretty girl here doesn't see the lieutenant anymore. Are you out of your mind? I'm talking to you, Pop. Pop, do we have to take this? Listen, Ghost, a man can only stomach so much. You coward. All right, Ghost. You ask for it. Now I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to tell you plenty. I said shut up. Spring it fast. Pop. Never mind, Julie. I know what I'm doing. 
eight long years, I've had humble pie. But no more, Ghost, because I know a thing or two about you. I got enough on you to put you away for the couple of years left in that rotten body of yours. More than that, I've got enough to burn you. You through? No, not yet. You stay away from Julie. And don't give her no orders. Don't touch that toy. I can't prepare for this, Pop. Check, get me that file. This is the payoff, isn't it? Joe Pratt has Martin. Big Charlie wants to see you. Well, no, isn't that nice? I'm always glad to see Big Charlie. I haven't come up to my place. Big Charlie picks his own places. Why don't you relax, boys? Just kind of take it easy. And pay my compliments to Big Charlie. Tell him I'm a little busy right now. We're not looking for any trouble. Check. Get him out of here. You help. I'm calling the sheriff. No, you don't. Look, two men have been killed and another wounded. I'm calling the sheriff. Huh? She's calling the law. It ain't good for you. This is right. You know what you're doing. I think he does. Don't listen to him. You're acting like a guilty man. A murderer. He is. He's not. You shot him in self-defense. You have nothing to hide. Julie, I'm a two-time loser. Two-time loser. Don't explain, Pop. Go ahead, Ghost. Go on and show her. He was going to do it when the boys dropped in. Now I don't care. Go on and show her. Pretty, huh? Your Pop couldn't help himself, Julie. The ghost's been blackmailing him. I know. Shut up. Get inside. Well, it looks like a funeral all around, pretty girl. What do you mean? Now, now, relax. I think it'd be a good idea for you to bury that soldier boy friend. I'm the head man now. Go! Don't go! What do you want to do, hang? Well, listen, honey. I think we're beginning to see eye to eye. And I don't think you want to mess up the lieutenant's life. Is that right? Listen. It's not so bad. I'm offering you a lot. Security... Luxury, gowns that fit like, like a glove, and everything I've got. And that's everything you can see and lots more. Oh, please. Now, listen. Just listen to me. I'm not going to let on. Someday soon, <laughs> I'm going to blow up from the head or in the chest. And everything will be yours. This world is only made for you. Why don't you forget your soldier boyfriend, huh? No! <laughs> I tell you, when I killed Joe early eight years ago, I was crazed with pain. I was. Why, they beat me near to a pulp before I shot. You know that, Jake. That's history. Come on. All right. But I ain't a killer like you are, Jake. Why, well, it makes me sick even to see somebody die. If you're going to blow your top, all right, I'll, I'll keep shut up. But we're both in this together. Gee. Well, if you want to come out. All right, I'll keep shut, Jake.
Hi, Pop. Oh, hello. Behaving yourself? Oh, sure I am, Doc. Thought we might like a cold drink. Getting hot every day. Well, we'll be seeing you, folks. Take care of yourself. Let's hope. Julie, you don't think I've done wrong, do you? Of course not. You couldn't help yourself. I saw it all, Pop. Julie, you don't know how good it makes me feel to hear you say that. Of course, I ain't no killer. I know it. They couldn't do anything to you. Oh, couldn't they, though? I'm a two-time loser, Julie. They never believe me. <laughs> What are we going to do? I don't know. Listen to me, baby. The boy's right for you. It mustn't be. It can't be. Of course it can. What a man don't know don't hurt him. You just up and leave here. No one will ever know what happened here last night. Me, I'm button lift. Don't do that like a child. What can possibly happen? Pop's daughter, aren't you? Yes. My name is Cola. Big Charlie sent me up here to do a little surveying. Surveying? Well, what does Big Charlie want with us? Well, you know our boys when you see them, don't you? Well, I know, I know some of them. Was Shorty and Steve here last night? Not that I recall. Uh, do you remember anything, Julie? No. And nothing happened last night? Well, the ghost was here. Yeah. And nothing happened? Well, nothing that you'd be interested in. Oh, I see. He was up here doing a little courting, huh? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, if you must know, Mr. Martin asked me to marry him last night. Well, if I was you, little girl, I'd do a lot of considering. I don't know how healthy Mr. Martin is. Pop, we'll take your word for that nothing happened here last night. But I hope you ain't kidding. Oh, Pop. Is it always going to be like this? Oh, darling. Hello, Julie. Hello, Bob. I didn't expect you so early. Come on, put on your bonnet and smile. And we're getting married. Now? Yes, now. Oh, I know what you're thinking. It seems kind of sudden, like a big rush. Bob. Now you're going to listen to me now. Sit down. I've got a lot to tell you. Now listen to me, Bob. Darling, we're leaving. I can't tell you, even you, exactly when or where we're bound. That's military information. But you must believe me. I'm hardly an impetuous guy. I'm in such a big rush, there's a reason. I'm sure of that. Honey, these aren't days to dally. Life pours by in torrents. You've got to seize it now or maybe lose it forever. Who knows if we live tomorrow? Yeah. It's just it. She knows if we live tomorrow. No, Bob. It can't be. What can't be? You. Me. Us. We're meant to be. Oh, no, you're kidding. No, Bob. Yeah, but what are we waiting for? I'm not going to marry you. But Julie, last night. Last night was a long time ago. A long time ago? Longer than I can remember. Bob. I do not love you. I don't believe you. Do you think it's fair to marry me tonight and leave me tomorrow? Perhaps never to come back? You don't mean that, Julie. I'll always be with you. Don't you see? Don't you know? Thousands of us, millions maybe, will have to go out and fight. But why? So 
so that life can go on. It must go on. Of course you know. No, Bob, please don't. Don't ask me why. Julie, you love me. Maybe. In a funny way. Is there someone else? Yes. Well, why don't you tell me about it? About... It doesn't matter. It's not really important. What? Well, he can give me security and everything I want. I'll be a rich widow. Then maybe... It's a ghost, isn't it? Yes! night. We'd have a few things to settle. You come along? Yes. Have a drink or a cigar? No, thanks. <laughs> You're a pretty sociable guy. Why don't you relax once in a while? I want to see you alone. I never see anybody alone. It's about the girl. That's right. Brush you off? How long have you known Julie? Don't ask me questions. You came up here with something on your mind. Now get it off fast. Don't order me. I'm going to do this my way. Your way? You don't know who I am, do you? Shut up and I'll tell you. They tried to kill me twice, left me for dead. Everybody calls me the living ghost. When I talk, everybody listens. Everybody! You know, I had an idea last night that you had some mighty twisted ideas concerning your own importance. And now I know it. But why Julie should pretend not to see through it, I don't understand. She sees what you don't see, soldier. A head man. A future. Not a hero's tin medal. A future with you? Yes. Yes. Every outfit needs a leader. I'm that leader. I lead people. And when they argue, I beat them down. So that's it. Little Napoleon. Brother, your time has come. From you? Nah, not from me. From millions of people all over the world. Thanks for the compliment. You know, you're a case. It must be your kind that makes a Hitler. Birch's garden must be something like this. That's where Hitler chews rugs. Hitler? Why that cheap punk... He's an amateur. This is America. I'm right in the middle of it, see? And let me tell you something. Everything I've got, I got myself. When I started out, nobody gave me a lift. Nobody said, here, Ralph, help yourself to a chunk of this beautiful life. You think I'm crazy, don't you, huh? No. Nah. I know you're crazy. How much longer do you think people are going to put up with you and your kind? How much longer do you think little people are going to stand being kicked and mauled? Can't you see the handwriting on the wall? What are you talking about? Uh, you never read the Bible so you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But you're the last of your kind. The gangster's time has come, big and little. You're all mad dogs. You poison a few, yes, but remember, mad dogs die of their own venom. Mad dog, huh? Well, maybe. You don't scare me. There's too many of us. Where are they? All over the world. You'll see. Little men. Honest men. Big with the dignity of toil and strong with the courage of decency. And these men will have their day. Do you know when? When? When they learn that you're made a noise and bluff. So you thought you'd come up here to tell me off, huh? That's right. Just to tell you off. Good night. Oh, 
All officers and men are ordered back to camp at once, sir. Right. Don't let him get away. Did you hear what he said? Noise and bluff. I'll make that shaved tail eat those words. You bring him back here in pieces. Hello, pretty girl. Now, here's what happened. The soldier boy was up here about five minutes ago. Yes, but I don't think we'll have any more trouble with him. Says you. Pop, I don't know what's happened. Bob went to the dunes. He must be in great trouble. But with them big gorillas? Why, you ain't got a chance. I'm going. Hello? Yes, Bob. No, no, she isn't here. Really, she isn't. Okay, I I'll be right over. Big Charlie says no gunplay. You boys behave yourself and everything will be all right. Anybody tries to get funny, they'll get clubbed. Now, do I make myself clear? We got a special treatment for the ghost here. Big Charlie's got a great sense of humor. He figures that bullets would be wasted on you, but to beat your brains out. Get him out of here. And wreck the place. So you bumped off Shorty and Steve, eh? Well, now I'm going to finish you. I'm going to do just like Big Charlie said. Beat your brains out.
I knew you'd find me. You said you'd help me. Help me. They think I'm dead. Me dead. He's gone. He's at the camp. He's licked and so is Big Charlie. I'm not ready to die. Not yet. I've got work to do. You and me, we can take the whole world. I... I never killed anybody before. 
This is the first time. I always took the safe way. I had stooges. I let them burn. What time you burn? Think of all the people you've had beaten and killed. Think of them screaming and begging for mercy. No. No. No, please. They're all over me now. Get them away. They're all over me now. Please don't. And the sheriff sent us. Ghost killed my father. Then they're in there. We're very sorry, Miss Bronson. We'll take care of everything. The sheriff got Kohler and his men. I have a message for you. What? I saw Bob. I fixed things up. You did? Yes, his regiment's being moved. You're to be in San Francisco in three days. You're to marry there before he leaves. San Francisco. Look, honey, you've got to go. He's right for you. 